Hi, Heather here from Creative Kiwi. Thanks for joining me and watching this video on our very much requested stacked Christmas bauble design. Try saying that one fast. Uh, I know many of you love our stacked designs and wanted something a bit more Christmassy, so we've come together with put together this bauble. And I hope it's one of the designs that you guys can really add your own touch to. Uh, you can see there, um, this is my 4x4 sample, which shows how you do the stack design in the hoop. So if you are new to the style of design, uh, you can see how we've built it up there. So you're doing each bauble and joining them as you go. So don't worry, if you've never done it before, this video shows you exactly how to do it. And the great thing is that you can make this larger design with your 4x4 hoop. The, the creamy colour on the front, the kind of tone on tone is uh, the front of the bauble and I've got quite decorative stitches on there and quite a lot of texture so I thought that would be nice if you did just want to stitch out a, a sort of elegant type of, of Christmas bauble. But the back view you can see that um, I've just put plain fabrics on there and it actually looks quite cool. So you could just do that on the front, you could skip all our um, decorative stitches and just use fabrics of your choice on the front and you could make quite a fun looking design. Now there's so many uses for it. Um, I must admit I don't have a lot of Christmas fabric at the moment and I haven't been out shopping. So uh, I've done mine fairly plain. But you can, uh, as I say before, you can um, not stitch some of the quilting designs on there and just put your favourite uh, Christmas fabric on there. Um, you could get quite creative if you've got photo fabric you could print funny photos of your family on there and then use that in the middle so it's really a design that you can use as you like and I can't wait to see what you guys do when you're looking for what sort of fabrics to use here I just used four uh, tone on tone fabrics basically four different fabrics on the front and the four different fabrics on the back I did add an uh, iron-on interfacing to the back to the back of the uh, Backing fabric. Um, I use Palin or uh, fusible fleece and it's about a quarter of an inch wide. We've got a wee hanging tab there which you can do as fancy or as plain as you like and just trusty old tape just to hold everything in place. Now in New Zealand we call it masking tape or painter's tape. You do need to use the wash away stabiliser and two layers. You can see I'm putting that there and it's a fabric type stabiliser. So not the plastic solvey but it's actually a fabric type and you need the two layers of this so that you don't have it tearing away at the very end of your design with all the satin stitch edges. Now I've used the pinning method here um, and that's just to ensure there's no movement in the hoop and if you want to know more about that you can visit the website. So let's get into it. So first of all we've hooped our two layers of stabiliser and we've stitched the first outline of the design which is the bottom bauble. So we're starting from the bottom going down up to the top. It's a bit hard to see on the video but it is actually there, the outline, and then you're just going to place a piece of batting over the top of that outline and you can tape it in place if you prefer. Back to the machine and you're just going to stitch that outline again. And what you're going to do next is you're going to take the hoop from the machine and we're just going to cut away the excess batting at this point. just makes it easier for your next step and it just um, takes away some of the bulk from your seams. You can see there I'm just using my trusty old uh, dressmaker scissors. I sort of go between using those style and um, some duckbill applique scissors. Sharp scissors are what you need. Now you can see there I just place my bottom fabric over the top of that guideline and we're just stitching that down again. And now it's just onto whatever you want to put on the front of the hoop. Now uh, the design has obviously got the um, the pretty decorative stitches, which you're more than welcome to use, obviously. But if not, if you wanted to add something, this is where you would add whatever you like. If you want to put some words in there or a different design, you do it all now, because the next step will be to actually put the backing on. So you can see I've removed that hoop from the machine again. And we're just going to turn it over. 
and you're going to place your backing fabric on the back. You can see you have the right side of the fabric facing out towards you. And so this is quite cool. This is where you could have like a naughty and nice. You could have it really nice on the front with the, the pretty stitching. And on the back you could have, I don't know, <laughs> whatever wording you like. Um, but you could, as I say, have a bit more of a jokey type um, reverse. It's up to you. With When you're doing it reverse, the things you need to think about is the bobbin thread. So the bobbin thread's going to show. So you'd, you'd need to use a matching bobbin thread and then, I guess, one that complements both sides, the front and the back. So you can see there, I just um, put the hoop back into the machine and stitched the round again. So that's attaching the backing fabric. And there's my duckbill scissors. As I say, the sharper scissors are the best ones for this style of design. And we're just cutting away that excess fabric on the back of the hoop. And this is why we use the wash away stabiliser, so that there is no, um, you can actually get rid of the stabiliser completely away from the edges. I get asked, can you use tear away? I mean, it is up to you. You don't have to use um, anything that we say, basically. But what you need to look at for this style of design is if you're using a tear away, definitely use more than one layer because it is satin stitch and it's dense on the edges of this design. And if you've just got one layer of tear away, it will tear away. It will tear away before you're finished. So by all means, you can use tear away. Um, you just may find that you have like little pokies on the edge of, of the design. So I've put the design back into the hoop, uh, into the machine and it's just doing a zigzag, which is just doing um, neatening those raw edges. And then really simply, it's going to finish off the bauble. So it's just that one colour and it just stitches the satin stitch edge. Now it does leave a raw edge just on the right hand side there and that's where you're going to join your next uh, bauble. So there you go, front and back. Now all the baubles are made the same way. So you get this one, they're all done exactly the same and there's just a joining stitch on the next lot. So if you wanted to make a, um, a stack that's only two or three um, baubles, you drop off the bottom. So you always have to have file D, the last one's the top, and then maybe if you just want two, then you do file C, C and D. If you want three, then you do B, C and D. It's all in the written instructions. So we're on to the second bauble, so we've uh, done the outline on the stabiliser. We're now attaching the batting, exactly the same as before. We're going to remove that from the hoop. Oh, and I've done that magically. Um, cut away the, the excess stable, uh, batting. And then you're placing your next fabric on the front. And again, it's just then, it is just the quilting stitches. So there's a quilting stitch and the word Christmas, which I know does not show up very well on that material. I should have used a darker thread. Now we're going to follow the same steps as before. We're now going to add our backing to the back of the bauble. And as I say, the plain colours look quite good. If I had more Christmassy colours, I may have perhaps done the front like this. Back to the machine and just run that next stitch around which attaches the backing. So this, these videos are designed to go with the written instructions that we include with our design files. It's just to show you the actual steps that we take. So all the actual stitch colour numbers, things like that, they're all in the written instructions. So we're at the stage where we're just cutting away that excess fabric on the back. In the front. Now I get into the habit of doing of cutting the the backing fabric off first because it's very easy to cut away the the fabric on the front and forget and put it back into your hoop. So as I say, it's just a habit I've got into is doing the back first. So there we go, bauble two ready to go back to the machine. Now this next round is just going to do a zigzag and then it's going to stop the machine where you do the join. And 
there we go. So there's actually a raw edge. You can see it's zigzagged all around in a raw edge. Now that's where you're going to match your first bauble. So there's a stitch line there, and there's a stitch line there, and there's a gap with the zigzag. So you're just going to place it in there, and there's a slight overlap because you're matching the stitch line on the stitch line. Now you can tape this down. Now I don't like taping, uh, stitching over tape, so I sti uh, tape my um, design down outside of the stitch line, which is just that zigzag, but it's completely personal preference. We're back at the machine, and we're going to do that joining stitch. Now this is your first time, I'd suggest you try and slow, you slow the machine down, or you start and stop as, as you um, feel confident. It is just a zigzag stitch, and what you're looking for is that it gets both parts of the fabric, so it catches both parts. So you can see here, I'm just going to check, and just at the edge there you can see the zigzag has covered the raw edge, and it's got both parts of the bauble covered. And that's it. Now you're just back on, on the last stitch of the of the bauble again, and it's going to do the satin stitch right around the edge and do the top bit. And as I say, I've got matching bobbin thread in here, just so that um, it's nice on both sides. There you go, magic, it's completed. And that's your part one and part two. Now for the next part, I'm just not going to go on the video again, you can see I've just got pictures there. So again, you hoop your stabiliser and you stitch your outline. You place your piece of pallen over the uh, outline and cut away the excess, add your fabric and then stitch your design. And so we start the video up again, so we've done that, we've done the third bauble, we've um, added our design to the front and now we're just going to add our backing fabric again on the back. So it's all the same techniques used to right throughout the design and all our large appliques, they're all done like this. Back to the machine. And again, we're just stitching that outline again just to uh, attach the backing. Now I think you, probably this one, okay, it's, I've done it all completely in the one, um, one colour, one colour thread. So. Um, if you're looking at your machine that's showing you many different colours, that's because it's stopping the machine. So we have to use different colours to tell the machine to stop. But in terms of thread, I've just used the one thread throughout. So here we are, again, as we've done before, we're just cutting away the back fabric on the back of the design and then turning it over and cutting away the excess fabric on the front of the design. Back to the machine to do that initial zigzag and to stop where the join is. And then we're going to join the next piece exactly the same way as we did the previous lot. So you're going to remove your hoop from the machine, you've got the gap between the zigzags and you've got the stitch lines, and you're going to put that stitch line on the stitch line, uh, match the stitch lines, and then tape in place. And now we're back to the machine and it's going to do that joining stitch. And there we go. So I think you can see here, I mean, obviously with the, the quilting stitches, there's quite a few stitches in there. Um, but if you're just going to use fabric, if you're going to do some fussy cutting of some pretty Christmas fabrics, um, it's a really quick design to zoom. Because technically you could just have your um, satin stitches that's joined, I'm just making sure it was correct, and now back off to do that last final satin stitch. I think the next one I'm going to do, I'm going to do um, an ombre type, so I'm going to have the darker, go from a dark colour up to the light, light colour, that would look quite good. So there's the final stitch out of number three. Now we're on to the last file, file D, 
and you can see I forgot the hanging tab. So luckily I did another one just to show you where to put it. Uh, so again, you're just going to stitch your outline on the stabiliser. You're going to add your hanging tab as pictured. You are then going to put your pallet on, cut away the excess batting, place your fabric over the top and then stitch at the de decorative stitches. Now you can see here, this is when I realised, oh no, I forgot my hanging tab. So there is a second chance. You can put a se uh, the hanging tab on the back before you put the final colour uh, back backing fabric on. So I've done that there. And again, we're just going to stitch that in place or tape that in place before it goes to the machine. And now we're back at the machine and we're doing our um, final uh, attaching of the backing fabric. Now you can make this ball just as a standalone little ornament because it's all there, it's completely encased. I'm sure you all know what to do by now. Again, it's just going to cut that backing fabric away. I've just taped that hanging tab away from the satin stitch edge. You just don't want to have anything catching in that, that edge. So there we go, just about finished. Cutting away that excess fabric. We're back at the machine. Again, as we have with all the others, it's going to do that zigzag right around the top edge. And stop, we were going to do that final join so you've got that raw edge gap. And we just again stitch line upon stitch line. Tape it all down nicely. Back to the machine, do that final attaching stitch, and these certainly the joining gets easier with practice. Uh, I know we have a lot on the group, you know, the first time, like any technique, um, it seems quite hard or hard to get it as perfect as you'd like, but uh, you, you soon get used to it and you uh, do them really easily. And so here we are, this is the final stitch. It's just going to do that, um, the top of the bauble and then do the satin stitch around the edge. And that's it. That is your stacked bauble made. So for the last time, we remove the hoop from the machine. And we're just going to um, cut away all that excess stabiliser. Now, what I'm showing you here is just uh, using hot water and a Q-tip, and it's just how you actually uh, remove tra the traces of the stabiliser on the edges. Now, if you were going to put this somewhere um, where it can get moisture on it, you would want to actually put the finished design through a wash to remove all traces of the stabiliser. At the moment, if you've got water on it, it would shrivel up. So you probably don't want that. Um, so as I say, depending on what you're doing, um, mine, this will be hanging inside, unlikely to get water on it. So basically all I'm going to do is, as you'll see now, is just using, I've got hot water and the Q-tip and I'm just going to do the edges. So same as if you were going to use this, I don't know, incorporate it in a, a cushion or a, a quilt or something where it doesn't get water on it, you can just finish like that. But if you're going to put it on a table where it could get something um, water on it, put it through the wash and then once you um, dry it and press it, it comes back to um, look just as beautiful as it does now and that way um, it won't shrivel up. It's just the shriveling up is caused by the excess or the stabiliser that's inside the bauble. So there you go.
So I hope you can really see the possibilities with this design. As I say, I've, I've tried to do sort of cover two lots with an elegant side. Um, but yeah, using your different fabrics, adding your own wording, you can make it really personal for yourself. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy the video and I hope you enjoy the design. Please join our Creative Kiwi Facebook group and then you can share um, what you make with the, with the design. Thanks so much. Bye.